border. So, here we go. All right, so today, uh, I said on Mondays, it's gonna be the let's play around with something day, not the learn something new day. So today is the play around with something day. If you go on to Canvas, the Canvas site, of course, of the best programming class, you will have this entire, this entire day and uh, scroll down to uh, da, 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 officials loops. Here we are. Um, loops is what we were her, 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 her talk, talking about. You will see a new thing there shortly because I put the file up, but then I forgot to put it in. Uh, second. And there we are. It'll be densitycalc.py. And I'll move it up right underneath of uh, L4 loops. One. You want to down. You want to download that that that, that guy. And base what we're doing today off of that file. So download that. Put it somewhere where you can find it and open it up with Thony. When you do, it should look something vaguely like. Wait for it. This. And start recording that part of the screen. Okay. Make this a little bit bigger. All right. You should see something that looks kind of like this. Everyone have uh, everyone have it open? Cool. All right. So I'll just kind of walk you through this and uh, talk about where we're going today. Um, if you've looked at the uh, homework, you might recognize this statement here at the top from math import exp or exp. Um, that's if you haven't looked at, at the homework, that's um, uh, importing the x, the natural x exponent function. So you can use that to raise e to a power, e being um, uh, 2.71828 dot 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 dot. Um, it's just another constant like pi. Um, so what's going on here is uh, this is an air density calculator using the International Standard Atmospheric Model. It's the same model we've been drawing the temperature and pressure um, equations that we've been using from. So this is just one that does it for density in, instead. So there's one input, it's altitude. Then we come down to the next section and it produces estimates for density, which I call rho. Um, Greek letter rho, uh, which comes out in um, units of kilograms per meter cubed. Uh, I also have a little, uh, the, the else here is a, if the user puts in an altitude that's outside of the applicable range of these equations, um, tell it's just there to tell the user that they did something wrong and they shouldn't do that twice and how, how they can fix their, the error of their ways. So it, it's, it's a pretty straightforward crude, crude code. You've made at least one thing like it, if not two, depending on how much homework you've done. Um, any, any questions on the basics of this before we get into what we're actually doing in today? Oh, great. All right, so let's play the game. Um, see if I can be as cool as I want, as I, as, as I would like to be. There we go. All right. So what I'd like to, to, to do today is take what we've learned and throw it at a problem. In this particular case, I want to throw it at a um, problem that admittedly probably none of you have, 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 have seen here before, but I promise isn't that, isn't that bad. It's the question of, so um, say I'm in, in, say that I'm in, in a plane, here's my little, plane of science. Woo. Okay. And I'm rock and I'm rocking along here. Um, the, 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 how, how fast I can fly is going to be limited by two things, right? How, how, how much thrust I can put out and how, how much drag I have, how much the atmosphere is trying to slow me, me down, right? Hey, we're, 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 have we all heard of drag at some point in life? Great. Okay. So how much drag there is, 
drag a B force going that way, call it D. And then I have the thrust produced from my engine going the opposite way. And when those two balance, I can't go any faster, right? If I, if those two forces are in e, e, e equilibrium, I'm at my max speed. So thrust, that is called, say that I have a rocket in the back, that one's pretty, pretty fixed. So um, depending on what sort of, 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 of a, a rocket you have, you might have of, of north of like 10,000 pounds of thrust, say. So we'll just put in a number for that one. Say you have 10 kips of uh, thrust installed and that will always be the same period. Uh, yeah, a uh, thousand pounds. Yeah, I uh, just call a. It's called there's some poor soul somewhere who decided to apply a metric prefix kilo to an English unit pound and came out with the kilo pound. So kip one kip is one is one is one is one thousand pounds. Um, so anyhow, let's say there is it's a ten thousand pound engine and pound thrust engine in the back. That's not really that extraordinary. There are plenty of jet engines, and rocket engines that, that can do that. We're going to ignore atmospheric effects and just say that that number is always the same. Drag though, drag though changes. The equation for drag looks something like this. One half density, that's air density. Um, wow. I'm blanking here, times cross-sectional area of the aircraft or of the wing times something called the drag co coefficient, C CD, times, its times the aircraft's velocity squared. This is where it starts to get interesting. Um, so cross-sectional area, obviously that's going to stay, stay the same because, well, it's the same air, 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 aircraft. So uh, let me throw, let me do a little bit of a race in here and get myself some room. Okay. So this this guy, a, re a reasonable number for that um, could be somewhere in the neighborhood of say, um, hmm, 50 square meters. I know I'm mixing a lot of units here. We'll, we'll, fig, we'll, fig, we'll, we'll, fig, we'll figure it out. Um, a typical value for drag coefficient would be in the vicinity of 0 0.1. And it, does, it, it doesn't have any units on it. Um, air density, that's going to change. But hey, we have a whole calculator dedicated to finding what the density of air is at a, at a particular alt altitude, right? Um, so we'll just say that air density is a, cal is a calculated value. And now that we've broken down drag a little hole of a bit, we know that you can see it's related to velocity. We want probably want to solve for what the what the maximum speed of this aircraft is at whatever altitude we're calculating our air density at for the amount of thrust that it can produce. So that's, that's our goal. We want to compute maximum speed. We want to compute the maximum speed of this aircraft based on its size, the drag it produces, the, en the engine that it has installed, and whatever altitude that we're at, which is a proxy for saying the, the, the air density that it's operating in. You're all on board with that? Cool. All right, so first things first, if we're gonna solve for velocity, well, we probably should do the math first. So um, let's do some math, solve for V and go from there. So, uh, let's see. So if I solve this equation, I'll just put everything into a uh, very into, into variables, divide through by everything that's not v on the right hand side. Should get something that looks like that. 
Let me uh, do some labels here quick. So rho is density. And S is area. CD is your drag coefficient. You said this guy is 50 meters squared. This guy is 0 0.1. And you said T, I'll move that somewhere else. And you said T is um, 10,000 pounds. All righty. Uh, for reference, that's about 44 uh, kilonewtons since everything else is in metric, since everything else is in met is in metric. All right. So now we have the expression that we need in order to solve for velocity. We just need to pick an altitude to solve a little bit at, right? Because I have my little calc, if I have my little calculator that I put up on the canvas, I just need to pick, pick an altitude, it'll spit out a density. I just have to plug in everything else. I should get the velocity. So let's do so let's so let's do that. Anyone need to copy stuff down from here? We we all we all got the information that we need. Sweet. All right. Then let's get back. Let's get back to Tony. All right. So here's here's my air density calc calculator. Um, right now, the way that it's constructed it outputs air density. Well, now I want it to output maximum speed and I need to adjust it a little bit so that I'll output maximum speed. So I'm just gonna take this file, um, do, 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 hit save as, save it as max velocity calc. It's always good, good, good practice to not um, save over your own work. So you always say is have have it for 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 later. Change that. All right. I know the only input that I need is which called the the which called the only comp computation that I need to make is for density and velocity, right? But I but I just said a whole bunch of things to start like airplane specific like how big like how big it is what its drag coefficient is all that sort of stuff so those probably should be inputs as well so let's input for like thrust put it in, in newtons because that'll probably be easiest to manage units with um said cross-sectional area it was like 50 meters squared I say ND for anything that's non-dimensional. And that's all, that's all the inputs that we needed, right? That's all that we had written down. Cool. I'm also gonna adjust my comments in a sense here to be more specific. So this is altitude. Um, Thrust produced by aircraft, cross sectional area of aircraft, and drag coefficient. All righty. So This isn't just computing density anymore. Computing velocity. All right, so let's jump down into here. All right, so my I'm still computing density, so these these constants should still stay in. It the only thing that's going to change is what I write out, and I need to add another line of code to compute velocity, right? So, um, so say I'm here in my 
first, the first part of my if. Um, note that this if is just broken up by if I'm in the troposphere or in the stratosphere, just how high I, I, I am. It's both on compute density, it's, it's rho, RHO. Um, so the question is, I have that equation. I have, um, uh, where is it? Um, this equation here, right? And I've put my user inputs in. I have my cross-sectional area. I have my drag coefficient. Um, I have my thrust. What do I need to do in order to write that equation into here? Tell me what to type. What should I be doing? Yeah. Oh, which call we definitely which call we definitely which call we definitely we definitely could. Um, tell me what to tell me what to type. Say say again. Um, velocimetry, it might have been a so velocimetry actually means something else. It's the measurement of velocity. It is the act of measuring velocity. So we can just say velocity. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we so by doing that, we've said that the variable that we're going to use for that we're going to store our max speed, our max velocity in is velocity. And we're going to have units and we anticipate having units in meters per second because everything else here is in metric. But what do I need to do in order to compute the value of the maximum speed of the maximum velocity? What do I need to what do I need to write? What do I need to write in? Okay, it's a great, it's a great start. We have our variable velocity and we're going to store something in it. What are we going to store in it? Okay, so that was that. Uh, row. Cool. And excess un underscore area. Yep. Capital C, lowercase d, I believe. And all that was square rooted. Okay. Well, a square root's the same as right. So there we go. Cool. So if I just wait, I'll just wait a second here. Okay. So if I go up here, I'll put in a low altitude, just say like zero meters. And that's just so that I know that I'm in that for that it'll run that first if statement there. Um, I'll run that, and I'll get a and I'll get a velocity and I'll get a and I'll get a velocity out. Great, awesome, and that is a which call it, which call it, and that is his 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 a acceptable velocity for the configuration of aircraft that we put in. I'm just going to say that up, 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 up front. Um, but I need to do the same thing in the, uh, in the next fork of the F statement, right? So what would I do in order to compute the velocity there as well? Yeah. Oh, because that should be velocity. So how so how would I a, a compute who so how do I compute velocity in the next part of the if statement? Yeah. 
Say again. Pretty much. The, the, the equation hasn't changed. The only thing that's different is what row is. So I can just copy paste that puppy in there and call it a day. And if I crank my altitude up, something that's in the, something that's in the, stratos, the stratosphere, I'll get a velocity that corresponds to, to, to that. Um, sanity check at this point though. Maximum velocity went up as we went higher. Um, that seems odd. Why, why would it go up? Based, based, based on our math. You don't even have to think about it conception, con, 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 concept, concept, conceptually. Yeah. Yeah, there's less drag because, right, right. And call it, the higher that you go up in the atmosphere, the closer you get to space, right? Space would be like no air. So if there's no air, there's no drag. So the higher you go, the fast, the faster you can, you, you can get. And that's actually why, that's why, that's why airliners try to, try to pick their flight route so that they can actually gain altitude as they go. Cause they can move, cause they can move, they can move faster burn and burn and burn less fuel. Um, it's the same thing with the uh, SR-71 Black, Black, Blackbird. It's the highest speed jet powered air, aircraft in, in, in existence. It couldn't reach its maximum speed until it got around 80,000 feet above, above, above ground because there's just too much air. Um, anyhow, cool. So, so conceptually, it makes sense that the, that the max speed goes, goes up. Uh, we, have some, we have some amount of confidence in our model. Is everyone ha is everyone pretty happy with what we've done so 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 far? Are there any questions with what we've done so far? All right. So this is all fine. So this is all fine and dandy, right? We have a cute little model. It does it does a thing. Life's great. But if say say I'm making like a say I'm making an analysis of this aircraft, and I want to see what its maximum speed is out of at call at a variety of altitudes. I'm not going to want to run this about 30 times in order to get all the data points that I need. I'm going to want it to run itself 30 times and do what I want it to, to, to do. So, um, so this is, is kind of the step between making a calculator and making a calculator that's in a loop <laughs> that does everything that we want automatically. So, um, so the question is, uh, what would we change in the in the loop? Well, right now our the, the dial that we're turning is altitude, right? We're, it's the same aircraft. We're just saying, okay, what's the max speed here or here or here? And saying, okay, it's going to change. How much can change by blah 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 blah? We're which call a whole. We're the the thing the thing that we're looking at the difference from is altitude. So that's the thing that we're going to want to change every time that we go through our loop. Yeah. So instead of being a user in, in input, that's, that's going to be a variable that we change inside of our loop. Question is, how many times do we want to go through our loop? That's, that's, that's totally up to us. Um, for kicks, let's just say 10 for right, for, right, for, right, for right now, and then we'll go from there. All righty, how do I want to say this? All right, so, um, so how would we hear, so how do we go through this? Let's see if we can dia, dia, diagram this. All right, clear, clear. All right, great. All right, so there we go. So when, so if we're, if we're thinking about how to structure this, one way to do it would be this. Here we have our velocity calc, calculator it spits out velocity input is altitude right so what i want to do each time that i run this is have a new out 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 you 1000 2000 3000 whatever so what I'm going to want to do in my loop 
say I do a for loop, and say I run it just like 10 times, I'm going to want to relate that loop variable and that h. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Absolutely, there is. And we'll definitely get there. Good, good, good point. Um, I just want to think through this guy a little bit first. So I'm going to have to relate these two, vari these two variables here, right? Um, how, let's call it whole, I, let's call it, say that I want to go and find the max speed at like every thousand feet. Let's, let's say that. That might be an e. That might be an easier way to say it. So if say I want to find the maximum some, some speed at every thousand feet, zero, one thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, how 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 could I relate? How 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 can I make that happen? Yeah, Vincent. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. So uh, what what I put in this range guy. I want to go from zero to 25,000 feet, including both zero and 25,000. Okay. 20. Cool. That'll work for me. Absolutely. That is a entirely valid way to do it. And we'll just call this guy H. And well, we don't have to redefine H because we just did up there. And poof, that should just work, right? Uh, we just call it the first time through that loop. We, H starts at zero. Great, that gets us the first one. Each time that it goes through here, H will go up by a thousand feet. That's our step size. So this is start, and it steps up by. 1,000 and it ends when it gets to uh, 25 to at or above 25,001, which means it will do 25,000, but it won't do the next one. Awesome. That's definitely uh, that's definitely a way to do it. Def definitely way to make it. Definitely way to make to make it to make it happen. Um, does everyone understand how <laughs> how that worked? You, you do not. I I would suggest reserving it, meaning I wouldn't use I for any other variable name. And that's because um, once I set the value of H here, do I want to reset it? Do I want to change it outside of like, if I go like that, would I want to do that ever? No, I, I would never want to change the value of my loop variable. I want I made, I made that loop variable so that the for loop could change it. I never want to touch it ever. <laughs> um, so my uh, so it's what I was saying about how variables like i, j, k um, is to have this just reserved in your head so you only use them as loop variables ever, <laughs> so you don't accidentally do it. That's that's, that's been my rule of thumb. But yeah, you can use anything for a loop for a loop vari for your for loop variable. All right, so this is definitely one way to do it. Uh, let's give let's let let's give it a let's give it a go. Uh, all right, so if I take everything I want to tab in, everything I want to tab in would be my density model. As Kevin mentioned, I just can highlight all that, hit tab tabs it all in. If I tabbed it too far, I can hit shift tab and it'll tab it all backwards. It, isn't it just? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I have it tabbed in one. I'm going to write in 4H in range, just like Vince was saying, 25,001, step size of 1,000. Ah, there we go. And let's see if that does something good for us. 
There we are. I have a whole bunch of velocities. It'd be awfully nice if you knew what altitudes those were at, but uh, can assume that it's been run the right amount of time. So let's let's just add a little thing on, on onto this print statement so we know what altitude that it's at. I'm going to go to the beginning, say altitude equals comma h comma meters. And just put a couple of dashes in there to set to set, separate it from the max velocity thing. I'll just copy the same thing down below too. There we go. So there we go. One max velocity for every altitude that we wanted. Almost. Wait, hold, wait, hold, wait, wait for folks to catch up there. So, um, See, my last altitude is 24,000, and then I get this error message. Um, where the, where, where that, I mean, that's, I say it's an error message because it's not a computed velocity. Where did that come from? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. The last H we'd expect to be 25,000 feet, which is not, less than 25,000, sorry, 25,000 meters, 25,000 isn't less than 25,000. So if I make that a less than or, e, or, or equal to, which is fine for the physics of what I'm doing, there, 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 there we are, there's, there's our 25,000. Great, awesome, that's handy. So this is definitely one way to do it. The trick is, what if I want to find, um, which call, which call, what if I want to be a really, really detailed and get, say, the maximum velocity at like 1,000.5 feet or 1,000.5 meters? Could I, do, could, could, I, could I do that? Or what I have to do in order to get that? Yeah. Well, let's have, let's have a shot. Like, like that. All right. Here, here we go. Mm. Nope, we get, we get an error back. Um, so we get type error, float object cannot be interpreted as integer. What was that, Gabe? You can't have floats, right. This is the, remember, this is the one trick about four loops. This range cannot do floats. That's the problem with it. Otherwise, yeah, it would be that simple. Um, it can only take integers. So we have to think some other way to do that, yeah. Can you divide your out? Tell me what. Tell me what to do. Uh, so I have this. Well, hang on. This is going to take forever to do. Oh, uh, let me do this. Okay, cool. I wasn't sure what you were saying. So, but if you're convinced that's not going to work, I won't inquire further. How is call? How is call? How are we going to have to do this? Okay. Yeah. We use. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I just call. What if we don't want to find? I I just call whole velocity at every thousand feet. What if we want to be very fine, fine about it? Say every, sorry, twenty five thousand meters. Everything's in meters. Say we don't want to find it every, every thousand meters, but every like half of a meter said we can't just change that to be half because we can't put floats into a four loop. So how, 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 how can we change this so that we go in increments of half a meter instead of thousand meters? Yeah. Okay, tell me what, uh, tell me what to do. OK, 
Okay, and what is X? Um, Oops, sorry. Ah. So I can just say H. Because that's our maximum cap. Yeah. Okay, and um, I'm, I'm using H just because I have H like everywhere else. Cool. All okay. right, H plus zero point five. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I already have that inside the things. Um, for kicks and giggles, just so that it doesn't take forever, I'm just going to change 25,000 to 10, right? <laughs> just, just so we can see if it, if it works. So I'm going to hit run. Great. So I, so this goes up to 10.5. It doesn't stop at 10, but it does go up by 0.5. And if I scroll back to the beginning, it actually doesn't start at zero either. So it, so it does advance the way that we want. That's and that's good, but it doesn't start at zero and want zero, and it doesn't end where at it does it doesn't end at ten. Say we want it to end at ten in this particular case. So how do we get it to stop where we want it to stop and start where we want it to start? Yeah. Just set this puppy to that. Uh, say again. Oh, this, oh, this, uh, this guy. Get, 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 get rid of that. Cool. So what? So let's let's go through the changes one at a time. Um, so first, uh, we change the starting value of H to negative point five. Um, and Tate, I think you're just saying that because the first line here adds point five to whatever we started at. So now we're starting at zero. Another way to do it would be saying, I'm gonna start at zero and I'm gonna change my altitude last. I can, I, can, I can move that bit of the code to the end of my while loop instead of being at the start. So that I do my call, call, call so, I, so, so I start at zero, go into the while loop, do my computation, then, in, then increase it. Alternatively, I can just start at a different out and start at a different out. It's called start my H a little bit lower and just ink and, and just increment it first, first thing. Either of those are valid ways, ways to, 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 to do this. Some people like starting at a number that uh, they kind of they that they kind of recognize. So that's easy. It's easier to de debug. Some people just like the convenience of having the increment be the first thing that you do. It's totally up to you, as long as it comes out right. Any questions on that? On that part of on that part of it. Great. Next part. Well, and we can just run that quick. And if you look back up here, we do actually start at the right altitude now. We are starting at zero. Perfect. That's exactly what we were looking for. Um, then came the other problem, going too high. Okay, say, let's call it, if I want to stop at 25,000, if I want to stop at 10, I want to stop at 25,000, or I want to stop at 10. I don't want to go to some amount more. So, um, um, what Nathan was saying is that, uh, if I if I walk through this loop, it's always doing the loop while h is less than or equal to ten, right? So let's 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 kind of play this this mind game for a second. Uh, say that I'm in this loop. Say I'm on line twenty six, and say that h equals um, say h equals nine point five. All right. So h equals nine point five. Is this is this is this is this condition true? Yeah, it is. So I go down to line 27. H is incremented by 0.5. That means that the value of H is now 10, right? H is now 10. It's right there for the keep to keep track. I'll go through this, compute my 
a value for row, compute my value for, for velocity, dis, dis, display it, go down to the end of the loop. Okay, nothing there. Come back up to the top. Value of h is 10. Is this condition still true? On line 26? Yes, because h is 10. 10 is less than or equal to 10. So I go, so I go down to line 27. I, inc I, I, I increment h. h is now 10.5. And that's and that's and then I go through and com com compute a new density, a new velocity, and that's where my problem comes comes from. Um, so if I just take that equal to off, it won't run that last time because 10 is not less than 10. Everything should work out well. Does that make sense to everyone? We on we on we on we on board with that solution. Are there any questions about that? Yeah. Okay. Do you do you only want to do between twenty thousand and twenty five thousand? Okay. Well. Just as with an if statement, I can, I, I can ask more than one question here. So I can say h greater than, yeah. Um, I would have to start this off higher though, right? Yeah, but I would call, but I can ask as many questions as I want to kind of uh, start off and run that, that, that while loop. This would definitely need to be, um, Something higher though. Now that said, um, the issue that we were talking that we were talking about here. Do, 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 uh, that which call ho 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 where her 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 um unless it's h is less than 10 and h starts one before one step before the um the uh, called actual value that we want to start on. Another way of uh, another way to think about it, as I said before, if I want to start, I want to initialize h at the value that I want, I I can do that. You said I can do that so long as I put that in, which called the timeline I increment h down at the bottom of the loop. You see, it's still it's still tabbed in by one, so it's still in so it's still inside of that loop, everything inside the loops tabbed in once. And then I also would have to do that. So if I run that, starts at zero, goes to 10. So which one you use is purely up to you. I like this method better because it's a little bit more intuitive to me um, on the front end. Like if I look at what I'm initializing my altitude as, it makes sense to start it at the altitude that I want to start it at. So, either it's called either 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 way of work though. Um, in, in addition to the way that uh, Vincent mentioned earlier earlier with the for loop, um, just for loops don't natively do uh, floats unless you make it do a float. So one way to do that would be something like this. This will just be the last side track before we go off and uh, do homework, right? So I'm going to get rid of everything that we had from our while loop, except for the initialization. I'm going to say, here you go, for i in range, I don't know, 1,000. I'm just going to arbitrarily pick. Actually, I'm just call it, I'm going to say that I want to compute the maximum velocity at a thousand different points. I'm gonna make that a number that I can change in case I wanna make that smaller or larger easy, easily. Actually, I'm gonna make it smaller so I can actually read it. And what, and what I'm, what I'm gonna do is say, well, if I know I want to compute 10, 10 velocities 
and I want those to be evenly spaced from zero to 25,000 feet, it means I just need to take 25,000 divide by 10, and that's 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 how much I move between which are between out which between altitudes, right? Well, plus one, I guess. So say I want to, so say if I wanted to, um, I'm gonna say this. I don't, how, how do I want to say this? Yeah, if I if I wanted to test at ten different out, 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 out altitudes, including um, zero and twenty five thousand, this is like my num. This is like my number line. Zero, 25,000, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. I need, call, I need to cut up the range from zero to 25,000 into even chunks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if I include zero and twenty-five thousand as points, that means means that I should anticipate one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine steps from zero to twenty-five thousand. Right? My first step is zero, and then I take nine, nine more, and I get there. Y'all on board with that? Cool. All right. So, question is. How big of a jump in altitude do I take each time? So if I look at, so if I kind of draw draw this, I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If I divide 25,000 by nine, which is one less than the number of altitudes that I have. So I can say my step size is what? Um, 25,000 divided by N ounce minus one. That gives me how much my altitude changes each time I go each time I go through the loop, right? So I should be able to say something like h equals i times step size. Right? First first time through the loop, i is zero, so I start on zero. Second time through the uh, loop, um, if this gap is say uh, 2,500 actually should be a little bit larger than that. Um, it would be one times that. Second time through the loop, it'll be two times that. Third time through the loop, it'll be three times that. Fourth, fifth, sixth. Instead of coming up with a float that, instead of kind of come up with some way to finagle a float into my range variable, into my range thing hinge, I'm coming up with a float, and I just use the for loop to ink to increment how 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 many of those that I go that I go through each 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 time that I run through the loop. Does that make sense? Cool. So there you go. Ended on twenty five thousand. Started on zero. Have eight more steps between for a total of ten. Um, nothing's an even number because ten does because um, nine doesn't divide evenly, but there, 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 there we go. If one, if one 11 steps, we can get there in a nice even chunks of 2,500. Any questions on that? Yeah. Yep. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yes, I wasn't gonna talk, so talk about it for another uh, month or so. Um, if you would like to do that sooner, um, I'll show I'll I'll show I'll show you I'll show you in a minute. Cool. Any other questions? All right. So the homework's out. The uh, rest of the class is for you to do that. I'm here if you have any questions or concerns.